O perfect love, all human thoughts transcending, lowly in prayer we come before thy throne, that theirs may be the love that knows no ending, whom thou forevermore dost join in one. O perfect life, be thou their full assurance of tender charity and steadfast faith. With patient hope and quiet, brave endurance, with childlike trust that fears nor pain nor death, grant them the joy which brightens earthly sorrow, Grant them the peace which calms all earthly strife, and to life's day the glorious unknown morrow that dawns upon eternal love and life.
Who presents this woman to be married to this man? Her mother and I do. No problem. <laughs> the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Laura and Nicholas have come to make their wedding vows in the presence of God and this assembly. The uniting of this man and this woman in heart, body, and mind is intended by God for their mutual joy for the help and comfort they give to one another in prosperity and adversity, and that their love may be a blessing to all whom they encounter. Let us now witness their promises to each other and surround them with our prayers. Give thanks to God for the gift of marriage and asking God's blessing upon them that they may be strengthened for their life together and nurtured in the love of God. Nicholas, will you have Laura to be your wife, to live together in the covenant of marriage? Will you love her, comfort her, honor and keep her in sickness and in health, and forsaking all others, be faithful to her as long as you both shall live? I will. Laura, will you have Nicholas to be your husband, to live together in the covenant of marriage? Will you honor him? love him, honor him, comfort him, keep him in sickness and in health, and forsaking all others, be faithful to him as long as you both shall live. I will. Will all of you, by God's grace, uphold and care for Nicholas and Laura in their life together? We will. We will. Let us pray. Gracious God, you sent your Son, Jesus Christ, into the world to reveal your love to all people. Enrich Laura and Nicholas with every good gift, that their life together may show forth your love, and grant that at the last we may all celebrate with Christ the marriage feast that has no end. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. You may be seated for the readings. Rise, my darling, my beautiful one, and come along. For behold, the winter is past, the rain is gone and over, the flowers have already appeared in the land. The time has arrived for pruning the vines, and the voice of the turtle dove has been heard in our land. The fig tree has ripened its fig, and the vines and blossoms have given forth their fragrance. Arise, my darling, my beautiful one, and come along. from the book of the Colossians. Therefore, as God's chosen people, holy and dearly loved, clothe yourself with compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience. Bear with each other and forgive whatever grievances you may have against one another. Forgive as the Lord forgave you, and over all these virtues put on love, which binds them all together in perfect Nick and Laura, here we are at the Stone Harbor Golf Club, and you're all dressed in your wedding finery, in spite of the wind. <laughs> and not only have you taken considerable effort and time to make certain that your wedding attire and all of your wedding plans have come together, but you've done a lot of work to prepare yourself spiritually and emotionally for being married. We've talked honestly about marriage and times that we've met together. And I believe that you're more than ready to joyfully undertake 
the challenges of marriage. My wife Kathy and my daughter Lauren introduced me last summer to a TV show called Say Yes to the Dress. <laughs> you see, I'm a captive audience. We have only one TV, and it was two against one. <laughs> anyway, Say Yes to the Dress, if you haven't seen it, is a show about brides and their family members selecting the gowns to be worn by the bride at her wedding. What brides, grooms, and Family members wear for a wedding is important, but when you take off your wedding clothes, what are you going to put on? How does one dress for success in marriage? Nick and Laura, what are you going to wear to ensure that yours will be an enduring and satisfying marriage? St. Paul in Colossians has some suggestions for your marriage wardrobe. As God's chosen ones, and you've just heard this, Holy and beloved, clothe yourselves with compassion, kindness, humility, meekness, and patience. Bear with one another, and if anyone has a complaint against another, forgive each other. Just as the Lord has forgiven you, so must you forgive. Above all, clothe yourselves with love, which binds everything together in perfect harmony. And let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts to which Indeed, you are called in one body, and be thankful. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly. Teach and admonish one another in all wisdom. With gratitude in your hearts, sing psalms and hymns and spiritual songs to God. And whatever you do in word and deed, do everything in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God through him. Put on compassion. Compassion is an inner attitude that each of you have toward the other. A fullness of tender caring and about the other's vulnerabilities and strengths that will overflow into how you treat each other privately and in public. On top of compassion, put on kindness. Now there is an article of clothing that is often in short supply in a marriage. When you're clothed with kindness, You'll be seeking the other's good as you deal with each other's weaknesses and sore spots. Kindness is a garment with healing in its wings. Then there's another article of clothing that does a marriage good, humility. If there is a place where pride and the need to be right and the struggle for power occur, it's in a marriage. Lack of humility leads to every kind of struggle. Humility recognizes the other's equal status recognizes that each needs that each has needs and plans that are equally valid. Gentleness is another garment worthy of a marriage. Gentleness is a garment of a person led by the Holy Spirit. When you put on gentleness, the other can take off the self-defensive armor and fearfulness and can put on trust. Every marriage could use several garments of gentleness. Now there's an absolutely essential article of clothing for marriage, patience. Nick and Laura, if you haven't discovered this already, each of you will have the capacity to drive each other crazy. It doesn't matter what the issue is, marriage takes patience. And this is just the tip of the iceberg. Patience requires a sense of humor, a spirit of live and let live, and most of all, patience takes love. Another essential garment for marriage is a spirit of stick to and forgiveness. There's a lot that needs to be endured in a marriage and a lot that requires that you don't give up too easily. It's a spirit of forgiveness that makes difficult things endurable, sometimes even erases them. Nowhere more than in a marriage is love repeated and having to say, I'm sorry. Don't say it to get out of a tight spot. Say it because you know that no other relationship is more vulnerable and no other is so easily hurt. And when the other asks for forgiveness, grant it. Speak not only of your pain, but speak a word of peace as well. Well, if compassion is marriage's inner garment and if kindness, humility, gentleness, patience, forbearance and forgiveness are its active wear, then love is the overcoat. On top of all these things, Paul says, put on love, 
Love keeps a marriage warm. Love is not merely an emotion. Love is a, an emotion as an emotion can wear thin and threadbare as it ebbs and flows like, a, like the tide. Love as the overcoat keeps a marriage warm. And it's made up of two things, both of which are essential for a marriage to endure, commitment and caring. It's the solid ground on which your marriage rests. As your wedding ring has no end, neither shall your love for each other. That's the commitment you make in your vows and the exchange of rings. But what good is commitment without caring? When you marry your signal, your signal in a real way, that this is the end of your life as you knew it. Your marriage does not mean that you lose your individuality or your freedom or your responsibility to control your life. The, uh, but the other will always be a factor in the conditions of your decision making. When you marry or commit yourself to each other, and you promise to caringly bring your whole self to your relationship. The clothes that Paul invites us to put on are not made of natural fibers. They're woven of spiritual stuff. Try as you might by your own power to create them, you need God to create them. Compassion, humility, kindness, gentleness, forgiveness, love, these don't come naturally. They're gifts of God when you pray for them. Laura and Nick, put on then as God's chosen ones, holy and beloved, compassion, kindness, lowliness, meekness, and patience, forbearing one another, if one has a complaint against the other, forgiving each other, as the Lord has forgiven you. And above all these things, put on love, which binds everything in perfect harmony. Let the peace of Christ rule richly in your hearts. Amen. May we stand for the vows, please. Nicholas and Laura, I invite you to declare your vows to one another. Make your first. In the presence of God and this community. In the presence of God and this community. I, Nicholas, take you, Laura. I, Nicholas, take you, Laura. To be my wife. To be my wife. To have and to hold. To have and to hold. From this day forward. This day forward. In joy and in sorrow. In joy and in sorrow. In plenty and in want. In plenty and in want. In sickness and in health. In sickness and in health. To love and to cherish. To love and to cherish. As long as we both shall live. As long as we both shall live. This is my solemn vow. This is my solemn vow. In the presence of God and this community. In the presence of God and this community. I, Laura, take you, Nicholas. I, Laura, take you, Nicholas. To be my husband. To be my husband. To have and to hold. To have and to hold. From this day forward. From this day forward. In joy and in sorrow. In joy and in sorrow. In plenty and in want. In plenty and in want. In sickness and in health. In sickness and in health. To love and to cherish. To love and to cherish. As long as we both shall live. As long as we both shall live. This is my solemn vow. This is my solemn vow. Let us pray. We give you thanks, O God of grace, for your love and faithfulness to your people. May these rings be symbols of the promise that Laura and Nicholas have made to each other through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Laura, I give you this ring. Laura, I give you this ring. Wear it with love and joy. Wear it with love and joy. As this ring has no end. As this ring has no end. Neither shall my love for you. Neither shall my love for you. Good job, Laura. Nicholas, I give you this ring. Nicholas, I give you this ring. 
Wear it with love and joy. Wear it with love and joy. As this ring has no end. As this ring has no end. Neither shall my love for you. Neither shall my love for you. <laughs> Laura and Nicholas, by their promises before God and in the presence of this assembly, have joined themselves to one another as husband and wife. Those whom God has joined together, let no one separate. Amen. Parents, Parents please join me. <laughs> Don't be shy. <laughs> Most gracious God, we give you thanks for your tender love in sending Jesus Christ to come among us, to be born of a human mother and to endure the cross for our sake, that we may have abundance of life. By the power of your Holy Spirit, pour out the abundance of your blessing on Nicholas and Laura. Defend them from every enemy. Lead them into all peace. Let your love be a seal upon their hearts, a mantle about their shoulders, and a crown upon their foreheads. Bless them so that their lives together may bear witness to your love. Bless them in their work and in their companionship, in their sleeping and in their waking, in their joys and in their sorrows, in their life and in their death. Finally, in your mercy, bring them to that table where your saints feast forever in your heavenly home. Through Jesus Christ, thank you, our Lord who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. <laughs> but now, get out of here. Get out of here. May we pray the Lord's Prayer together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. You can return to your seats. And it can return to wherever it came from. <laughs> the blessed and holy Trinity make you strong in faith and love, defend you on every side, and guide you in truth and peace, now and forever. Amen. Amen. May I kiss? <laughs> <laughs>